So I'm Brad Lepchak, um, co-founder of Memory, which is a um, functional beverage uh, company based in Charlotte, North Carolina. The market for cognitive health products is oversaturated with quick fixes. Uh, the focus is short-term symptom relief rather than brain health. And that's really evidenced by the fact that um, the products, the vast majority of products in this space are really designed to reduce or eliminate um, any of the consequences associated with a poor diet or unhealthy lifestyle. Um, consumers, on the other hand, looking to add brain healthy foods or reduce um, risks of Alzheimer's, for example, have few options in this space. So our solution is a line of functional beverages that really deliver highly absorbable whole foods that meet the brain and body's diverse nutritional needs. Um, our focus is to improve short-term cognition while also allowing you to maintain higher function long-term. The product was, you know, leverages the science and research of the MIND diet, which has been shown to slow cognitive decline but also reduce Alzheimer's risk by as much as 53%. Um, the benefit of really uh, building a product around a brain healthy diet is that eating for brain health is really, you know, eating for gut health, for heart, bones, um, et cetera. Um, and what that really, you know, allowed us to build was a, a truly balanced product with a, you know, wide range of health benefits. Um, which really expands our appeal well outside of the cognitive health space. As you can see, you know, it, you know, incorporating our product into, you know, people's daily routine is a big thing, obviously, for, for greater consumption. Um, and we make it extremely easy to do that. Um, nutritionally speaking, and our key features are extremely impressive. And I think it's really bolstered by the fact that our, our ingredients are from Whole Foods, um, which you know, increases nutrient absorption, which is a big thing for our, for our marketing strategies. Um, why now the cognitive health market in general has seen, you know, a ton of demand, but we also really like the fact that the functional medicine movement is really picking up steam. Um, doctors like Mark Hyman or Rhonda Patrick are really, are really you know, pushing it forward. Um, and also powdered functional blends similar to ours are really fueling the surge in, in D2C sales. These companies specifically have had tremendous growth, and I think it's largely because um, they're so e-commerce yeah, compatible, you know, shelf-stable, sustainable, um, and you know, easy to ship. The market size we play in, we're well positioned in both markets, but when we look at the market that we're trying to address, it's really the domestic um, market for, for functional beverages, um, which is large. And I think based on our forecast that we, you, know, you see here, um, you know, our projected market share is, is really attainable. So our, our com competition, you know, we break it down because, you know, cognitive health, again, with the quick fixes, and, and we're targeting more of long-term sustainable cognitive health. Um, it's less established, so the competition is fairly weak. Um, however, again, our product is so versatile, and we see ourselves you know, directly competing with some of the larger players in, say, the daily green space. Um, for example, I'm like highly competitive about Athletic Greens because I just think it, it products that much better than theirs. Um, you know, we're, we're more cost effective. We have better label claims, ingredient quality, uh, nutrient absorption, so on and so forth. Um, so I think our product is really our, our strength. Um, this is in bloom, comparing our, our, our uh, product to their nutritional profile. Their competitive advantage is they have you know, a ton of money and, and we have negative. So I think that's their, their, their strength. <laughs> um, the, um, our direct-to-consumer business model is, is what we're focusing on now. However, we do have the margins um, to pursue a retail strategy immediately. So it gives us some, some you know, the ability to pivot. So the star of the show is, is Erica, um, who's my wife. And, you know, her e-commerce experience is, is what, you know, 
Fortune 500 companies are looking for. Um, so the, really one of the main goals is to get her on board as quickly as possible. Um, is that it? <laughs> Dang. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Here's a forecast. <laughs> I should have I should have budgeted better. I should have budgeted better. So this this forecast is really predicated by our ability to raise. Um, you know, we see our, our biggest need and our biggest milestone is really achieving a, an annual run rate of $1.5 million. In order to do that, we think we need $500,000 um, in convertible debt. Um, and that will really fuel our uh, consumer education campaign, partnering with registered dietitians and incredible doctors in the space to really educate consumers on our products and the benefits, um, and also invest in single serving packages, which represent a huge investment for us. Um, but we really think that getting the product into more people's hands is, is crucial, so. Perfect, thank you, all right. <laughs> Ladies first. Oh, I've never been called a lady. <laughs> um, thank you for that. Um, so really interesting. Um, a couple of questions. Have you actually made the product? Yes. And have people tasted it? Yes. Do people like it? Yes. You should tell us that. Should. <laughs> you should be drinking it while you're pitching. Exactly. Should. Um, <laughs> So um, I will say a couple of things. I, I am in the healthcare space. Um, I always know if I have to educate the consumer, it's going to be a harder uphill push. So you know, kind of make sure that you know you you may have to think about uh, you know it's good for you and or it tastes good and it's good for you. You know, really coupling the two together because I drink a lot of green drinks and I don't like any of them. Um, but. That being said, um, I think definitely if you're going to have a direct-to-consumer um, approach, think about your consumer, what they want to hear, um, and you know, long-term um, means that you've got to get them on board and they got to stay on board for a long time. So you got to figure out what the hook is. For me, the uneducated consumer that might see a bunch of shiny cans or shiny products and go after them. Uh, interesting category. I'm a, not a, in healthcare. So I, I can't help there, but I am a self-proclaimed biohacker. So uh, I think that these are really difficult businesses. Um, there's lots of good pro uh, products out there for sure. Um, and direct-to-consumer um, is super expensive. And so in the context of kind of what you're trying to do in the capital raise, I think you've got to be really clear um, about that. And specifically the use of proceeds, you know, if product is uh, past development phases, if you have you know, uh, consumer, you know, feedback and tests, you have some clinical or you have some other science behind it, and you're kind of past all that, which would be product funding related use of proceeds, you've got to have basically, a, most of this deck to me has got to be marketing because direct to consumer cost of customer acquisition is insanely high and super yeah. hard. And so you're convincing an investor that somebody drops a very large amount of money to go direct to consumer on you, um, you know, I know you can kind of get out on the web cheaply, but the reality is at scale, it's a super expensive uh, thing to do. So it's really about your credibility as marketers, honestly. And I, I think kind of, of course, someone's going to say, well, maybe I want to taste the product or tell me the category. I, I think, you know, carving your place out amongst that competition and saying, hey, this is a big category. I need just a small amount of conversion here to make a business out of it. These are the economics of that business. I, I have good margins. I have the potential for retail. You can get to that in like a slide and a half. And then it should be, here's how I've cracked the code on the marketing side because, yeah. you know, it's just an, it's an immense product landscape and I think it's really hard to, to differentiate. So it be, becomes really a marketing exercise. And it sounds like, I, I don't know if you're about to tee up your wife as having that marketing expertise, which if she does, that's awesome. Or if you guys do, that would be a huge part of it as an investor to me is to say, I'm looking at the marketing credibility of this team. I'm going to assume for a pitch this, you know, long that the product's credible. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it is. It sounds cool. I love all those products. I buy tons of them. Right. But you got to convince me that you're marketers now. So less, so less on the front end about the, about the product and more about how we're going to get it into people's hands. How big the market is, what's the TAM, what's your position in there, and how you're going to attack it. Because it's all going to be, especially if you're going to say that you're going to go direct to consumer, because it's all going to be all about, you know, digital and conversion and all that fun stuff. So you right. just got to be super credible there. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, just one follow-up note, are you going to stay more towards the general benefits or are you going to try to go more towards actually clinically measured benefits? I think right now it's general benefits. The clinical, the clinical path is, is really expensive mm -hmm. yeah. um, and right now we just feel like that we, we need to get the product into more people's hands and, and you know, because I think that people are responding extremely well to it. Um, we just got to, you know, fund the customer acquisition. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, I, th this category, uh, you've made some mention of some things that I think are important. Yeah. Um, you know, people are just starting to understand, you know, dementia, Alzheimer's, long-term right. deterioration of brain health and what the impacts of all those things are. I think you've got probably a, 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 a good curve on a segment, pretty large segment of, of consumers for whom that's as top of mind as maybe, I don't know, my age group was like, you know, low fat or whatever, which all proved to be useless. But the, um, I think there's, a, you're kind of, have, you have an opportunity, I think, you know, in that, yeah. that stretch of the market, but um, everything's got to be like super concise on the marketing side. Yeah, yeah. and to that point, I think that our marketing, you know, our primary messaging at least really uh, resonated well with an older audience, primarily focused on, um, you know, prevention. You know, there's a lot of the stats out there are, are that Alzheimer's is highly preventable um, with proper diet and lifestyle. Um, what we're really determined since we just launched in May um, is, is what the retention rates are going to be from that audience compared with other younger audiences that really value, you know, our versatility, like they can use it for a protein powder, they can use it as their daily greens, and that's kind of a rarity among the space. So we think that there's more use cases probably for a younger generation than an older, but it's really, you know, we're really in the testing, you know, I think that's probably because we don't have money to really push, but it's also really beneficial to us to kind of understand, you know, who's responding best to the product. How old are you? Uh, 37. Do you have life insurance? Yes. Okay. So my <laughs> advice is... It's uh, like a date <laughs> Well, I think he is, I think they are. So my advice to you is to take a, a, a take some time to educate yourself on on the trajectory of that marketplace because you basically are selling life insurance. Because I don't have trouble focusing today, but you're telling me that I might have trouble when I'm 70. Those types of marketing problems can be solved. They're complicated to solve, but insurance is the classic example. Mm -hmm. There's a massive, massive financial industry that grew selling something that nobody needed at the time that they were selling it. Mm -hmm. You're kind of in a similar situation, but I think you've got a slightly more enlightened consumer, so it might be quite as hard, but you really got to think about you know, that side of it. How do I get this in, how do I get that thought you know, in people's heads, this is something that I need, not this second, but you know, those, all those types of pre preventative health things are challenging in that way, marketing wise, I think. Right. Right. And I think that, you know, we actually had like, you know, like it's an investment in yourself was one of the things that we were doing when we were building the product with right. North Carolina. Um, and, and then I'm listening to a podcast and then Athletic Greens literally says that on their, their next ad. I was like, they, they're just, you know, one step ahead and, you know, $60, $60 million bigger, you know? Well, <laughs> it's really it's a massive market. I mean, you got, you is, got plenty of time, they, especially if the product right. works. You they do gotta, a great job of it, yeah. though, like to your Absolutely. point. So, yeah. yeah. Do we have any audience comments? Okay. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jake. Uh, I, I view it from, you know, being a consumer, not being super sharp on this space. I would have liked to see a little bit more clarity around why it's good for me. So, you know, you think it's amazing because X, Y, Z, but show me the data, you know, very, very simply and clearly. So is it, yeah, 53% less Alzheimer's, but, you know, how do you quantify that? How do you validate that, right? Because there's, as you know, there's a going to be a gajillion options for me that are in shiny packages like yours. How do I pick yours out of the five? So just make that a little bit clearer from a yep. consumer perspective. Great. Do we have anybody? Oh, there we go. Um, sort of in line with that, I was, you know, as a consumer, I was thinking, what research have you done when you're building this? You know, so how do I know if I'm putting something to my body, I want to know it's good for me, right? So right. I would probably speak to that. Um, and then also just kind of a question. What is your distribution strategy? Um, and maybe right now it's just you and your wife, but like if you, if you think about if this is enormously successful and it takes yep. off, how do you plan to scale that? Yeah, good point. I didn't know if that was actually the question. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, th I, I think you know, third-party fulfillment is, is obviously the, the key for um, you know, would, would we get greater traction on, with our D2C approach. 
Um, however, you know, right now we just feel like it's it's so critical to control the customer experience. Um, you know, especially we, we gained a lot of inspiration from Huel, and he really preached about that. Um, you know, mix-ups in the beginning cost you customers long term. So uh, we really want to control that process, but we will definitely let it go once we once we have the demand to, you know, and the funds to to justify it. I think we had one in the back. Go ahead. I have a. I would be curious to know: Is there an age at which it's smarter to start this, rather like it absorbs better affects me better if I start before 30 or before 50? And secondly, it kind of makes me think of sunscreen: highly preventable, but not we don't all use sunscreen as widely as as we should. Yeah. Is there an age? It's, let's repeat for our live streamers. They just asked if there was an age that this was good to start with. So go ahead. Yeah, so I, I think that, like, in terms of is it limited to a, drinking it at a certain age? Like, kids drink it. Like, my kids drink this. Is that, is that what you're asking? Sure. Yeah, so I, so I do. So my, my youngest, like, loves it just with water. Um, my oldest just hates it. So there's just not. But, what we do is we like incorporate it into popsicles, like frozen popsicles and, and stuff like that. So, and, and we have that confidence because if you look at our ingredient list, I mean, you won't find a cleaner product on the market. I mean, you know, blueberries, spinach, um, sweet potato, beet. I mean, it's an incredible um, ingredient profile with, with more whole foods than you see anywhere else. So, you know, that kind of gives you confidence for a, for a whole family approach. So, that answered it. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Brad, thank you.